Why do you have just a bunch of hay in your mouth? Where'd you get that from? You have so much grass. That gate's open. Look at the grass. You are funny. You're funny. Hi, handsome boy. You guys are so cute. everyone today is the first weekend forward where I believe we are frost free and ready to plant in the garden so I actually already planted some Brussels sprouts and broccoli um, just a few days ago but I'm gonna get the rest of those brassicas in the ground hopefully today as well as some flowers that are cold hardy some other things that um, just need to get in the ground so Chris is working behind me shirtless <laughs> on finishing up some of the weeding and we still have a little bit left to do over here you darken it up for you guys but weeding is almost done and the garden looks fantastic now is the hard stuff well actually weeding's hard too I just didn't do it <laughs> because of being pregnant and having some weird symptoms going on that I was having to treat like asthma. Um, I've been taking it a lot easier than I normally would and Chris has been doing an amazing job weeding the garden. Honestly, he's a better weeder than I am because he actually tries to get the whole weed out and I'm just lazy and just pull it from the top and then it comes back. So he's probably happy to be taking it on himself so that he can make sure it's done well. Hoping to eliminate it. <laughs> Yeah, he wants, he wants to eliminate the dandelions for good, which I think we're gonna have a much smaller dandelion issue next year. The, the next part, the planting, is also incredibly time consuming. We love our no-till garden. We love using thick mulch. It's amazing for the soil and we have so many worms, but the initial planting is a lot of work because every time you plant something, you have to make sure the mulch is moved aside and you're really planting in the soil below. And that can be um, pretty time intensive and also physically intensive. On the flip side though, with the mulch, once you get things planted, you have much less weed pressure all season long. So it's like more work now, less work all season long. So it's really worth it. I mean, I remember last year when we got it done finally, it was like, now we just get to enjoy this and then the gardening season is so fun it's so enjoyable it's so stress-free you know you're not spending your nights weeding you're really just spending your nights walking in the garden and not and checking on things not watering as much either. oh yeah oh yeah yeah we don't water our garden at all because first of all we live in a, a climate that gets a lot of rain so there's that second though the mulch keeps the soil from drying out and also absorbs a lot of moisture and slowly feeds the plants moisture. So we don't water, we don't weed. It's kind of like an amazing stress-free, what's the word? What's the word people call it when maintenance-free? I don't remember. Anyways, there's still stuff involved, of course, you know, pruning and checking for pests and, and troubleshooting things, but it's a lot easier than it would be if we just had straight soil and planted right into it and I can tell you that for certain because our first year gardening we tilled a plot which we're not actually using right now the the chickens are over the roosters are over in it but our first year we we tilled a plot and we saw just how damaging that was to the soil to the moisture retention I'm counting you just can't see to the moisture retention and to the um, weed pressure and still the soil is recovering after this is three two years later now anywho let's get to gardening Yes, I'm probably gonna keep it, take it easy. And I'm just realizing my stomach is really growling. And when you're pregnant, you kind of have to eat a lot constantly. It's weird. So I'm gonna go grab some fruit or something, maybe some watermelon in a big bowl and bring some out here so I can calm my little stomach. Okay guys, is this cat hat cute? Chris got it for me for Mother's Day. He didn't just get me this cute hat. He got me a adorable little summer hat for the little, little baby. 
It's a little hat um, for when the baby is about six months old, which will be next spring. The baby will be about six months old. And it has carrots on it. It's so cute. I'll show you guys later. Or maybe I'll just pop a picture in. One of my biggest disappointments so far with being pregnant, oh, there's a bug on me, has been my appetite. Um, I normally am not picky. I eat, I like everything, I eat everything. Of course, you know, I prefer, you know, sometimes things that have more sugar, more oil, you know, classic American diet tendencies. But overall, I'm a really healthy eater normally. Whole foods, plant-based approach. We do use oil, but other than that, whole foods, plant-based, you know, grains and beans and rice and that's a grain. Um, avocado and we'll add like hot sauces and all kinds of yummy things from the garden and we still have lots of frozen veggies and canned stuff. But lately, I am so picky. Since March, since I found out I was pregnant, I have been the pickiest eater and it's not by choice. So I can't just choose to eat healthy when I, I don't want it because then I'll just feel gross and sick and it's just, it's not fun. So the one saving grace has been fruit lately. I really love watermelon and strawberries and berries. Unfortunately, it's not the right season for them, but I have to get what I can when I want it. So that's kind of how pregnancy goes. So I have this watermelon. I'm just gonna put it in a bowl and then bring it outside. Got my hat. Got my watermelon. We're gonna go back out in the garden and get some stuff done. Okay, let's go get the tray of brassicas and then we'll start start planting. This area needs to be weeded so badly. It's a mess. And this is garlic mustard. We need to pull all this guy out because it's very invasive, but it is something you can eat. Okay, so here are the brassicas and a rotting pumpkin um, and more brassicas. We grab this tray first, I think. Grab this tray first. So we're gonna get these guys planted in this area, I think. Lots of worms already. So the soil in this bed is still pretty heavy. Part of that is because it's wet. Part of that is because it's only a year of no-till. This bed is specifically back to Eden, which in my experience takes longer than roost out to create like a nice loose soil. So we're gonna go ahead and grab some compost from our compost pile and add, I'm gonna add that into the holes when I plant so that the plant's roots have something a little bit looser to grab onto. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I turned it a couple weeks ago. So, it's, you know, not really small, but it's fine. It's kind of like a, it's got like a mulch kind of, like a wood mulch looks like. Almost. But there's no wood in it. I know, it just looks like a, it looks fibrous like wood. It's just cause it's not fully broken down yet. Um, that's fine though, adding a little bit in will be good. So. Chris is working on turning, well he's almost done, turning the bunny poop hay pile so that it can break down a little faster. I know a lot of people have asked me for compost videos. Told you, it's a hot topic these days. Hot topic, but we are not very good at it, so I don't want to start putting out videos no. and tell you guys how to do something that we really don't know how to do very well yet. We will try to share more of our learning with you. Right now we're learning that we need to do more ongoing turning and watering of the piles. We just haven't prioritized trying to actually get it to break down quickly. Yeah. This bunch of compost that I'm going to use to plant in with stuff. I'm going to add some compost in here when I plant and I'm going to get those cabbages in the ground. Okay, I got the cabbage planted. I planted the rest of the cabbage in the hugu culture bed. Chris is working on weeding this. 
but the cuckoo culture bed's looking really good actually. So I planted four right here. I'm about to plant these flowers in this bed as well. You should show them the wild animals we have living in the bed right now. I have a wild creature in this bed. Hi. <laughs> you did a knucklehead. So we've collapsed most of the holes. When we start walking on the hugo culture bed and collapse some of the holes, the worms go nuts. Crazy, this bed is loaded with worms. And there's zero worms in it last year because it was all built. So the worms like migrated from our soil to the bed, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. You're cute, where are you going? See ya. Oh, hi. What? What? What are you doing? Ow, ow. She's so happy. Very happy. You're so cute. What are you doing, boo? Where? Ow! <laughs> Neck punch. She's so sleepy. She's very happy. What was that? You gonna sneeze? She's gonna sneeze. I have drool on my arm. Yeah. It's drooling on me. I'm gonna put you down, you little one. Okay, so I'm going to water in some of these flowers that I've gotten planted. So, I just spread them kind of randomly throughout the garden. I like to put them at the ends of the garden so that they, they're the first thing you see. Basil is awesome in the hookah culture bed because basil really likes heat and dryness and the hookah culture bed is drier and hotter so it's a perfect place. I wouldn't plant the rest of my basil yet just because it's not quite hot enough but I definitely can go ahead and plant stuff in the hookah culture bed because it's nice and toasty. Is that a wrap? That's a wrap.